let's talk about press checks. And I want this to be a short video, but I kind of want to explain things. So yesterday, or today, I think it was yesterday, uh, someone was on Reddit. Um, I believe they bought a new gun. Might have been a new, uh, I believe it was a 1911. But uh, evidently they hadn't seen this before. So if you look here, this gun is clear, by the way. You want to see? There you go. There's nothing in there, and there's nothing in there. So, his question was, is, is my gun faulty? Because he's looking at that crack. So, we have a mag full of snap caps. Look in that window. If you wiggle the gun a bit, you can see metal in that little window there. That is the snap cap. It's called a witness hole. So I told him that it's called a witness hole, but you probably should be press checking. Don't rely on the hole. Uh, he was okay with that. No one else had chimed in. And one thing I hate about Reddit is that you always see folks asking questions and I am an advocate. So if someone has a question about a firearm, I am there to help, especially new folks. But the problem is, is that folks are not willing to give a correct answer. They just sit there and wait. And as soon as someone goes to assist a person in need they are obliterated usually it's someone kind of picking apart their answer so I am used to that and you can't pick apart a press check he tried to it didn't work so like I said the person asking a question, he got his answer. He said, thank you. This guy joined in, and for the past 24 hours, he's been a total dick. It doesn't bother me any. I'm used to it. Uh, and I know that I'm right. So we're going to cover some things about uh, determining the status of your gun, if there's a round in the chamber or not. The assumption is that you should always assume that a gun is hot, but that could actually get you in trouble. Um, let's talk about the different types of technologies or ways to kind of check uh, your gun. So there is the witness hole here. Uh, this might not work if it's dark. Right now it's pretty bright in here. I have a floor lamp that's next to me. It's got five bulbs and they're out, they're putting out about 40 watts a piece. Uh, this is a small room, um, the walls are bright, so there's a lot of reflection. So it's bright in here, but even then, I have to wiggle this gun around to look in that little tiny hole. Not optimal, especially when there's bump in the night and you don't have much light to work with. So, another way would be to if your gun has an LCI, 1911s typically typically don't have LCIs. Um, they do. Uh, some guns have LCIs, such as I think I have a a six hour uh, SP 2022. Um, my wife's Ruger. Um, she has an uh, was a SR 9C. That has a big ass LCI. And the LCI usually sits here. Um, so you know that the back of the chamber is here. Um, that's why that hole is there, so that you can see the back. This is as far back as you can view, pretty much. So the LCI is going to sit here so that when a round is in the chamber, it's going to poke up a bit. So you can feel it and you can see it. And you could probably get, probably get away with relying on it in the dark. 
I don't like relying on LCIs because they are a movable part. Anything man-made can fail. So, another way to check would be, you know, like some Glocks, I believe uh, Berettas, anything that has an external, like some 1911s have external extractors. They usually sit here and they run along this way. When a round is in the chamber, they poke out a bit. Um, they poke out a bit, um, so that so it, usually it's minimal. Um, so you have to know your gun, um, and that's not always going to work for folks. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other ways. Yes, a press check. So, again, the gun is, you know, it has snap caps in it. There's no live ammo anywhere around here. So, if we do a press check, ta-da, we see brass. And we see a lot of it. There's no kind of squirming around trying to look through a tiny hole. There's no reliance on an extractor. Um, it's there. It's there and it's done. Quick, fast. Uh, so, the argument that this guy tried to make is, is that you should be using the tools that are available, like the witness window. Uh, anytime you press check, you're just needlessly moving the slide. Uh, you're going to cause a problem. You're going to cause an accident. You're going to shoot yourself. You know, all these little excuses. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Have you not been to training? How old are you? And I'm assuming that he's a FUD. And FUDs are usually, if they're not, if they're not older than me, uh, they're usually ingrained, they're usually hunters and people that kind of are unbending. So remember, we're advocates and there is no, you know, I'm, a, I'm an IT security guy. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, so I'm familiar with Linux um, and other operating systems. Uh, but one thing I learned in my t tenure uh, in the field is, is that there's no one way to do anything. It's the same with guns. So I just listed, what, three or four options on how to check to see if your gun is hot or not. And this is important. Um, and, and I'll kind of, I'll explain it this way. Yesterday I was at the range. And... My gun was empty. I had just arrived. So I took my mags out. I loaded them up. They had 17 rounds. I looked at the witness holes. They were full. I took one. I pulled the slide back, locked it back. I put a ma uh, mag in the chamber, in the, in the mag well. And I released the slide. And then I went, you know, went ready. And I pulled the trigger. No bang. Click. So I'm like, what the fuck? I just loaded these mags. So I pulled the mag out, looked again. There's 17 in here. There were 17 in there. That means that there was no round stripped from the gun. I did a press check. In this case, we have a round in the chamber. In my case, it was empty. So that is the reason you press check. That's the reason you should be press checking anytime you load a gun. You press check anytime that you feel that you don't know the state of things. You know, if there's a round in the chamber or what. Um, if that were some, you know, if that were an instance where I needed the gun, I would have been fucked. Um, the gun was not ready. If it was a nighttime thing where it was a, it was a bump in the night or shit hit the fan situation, and I immediately needed the gun, the fact that I didn't press check means that I failed. Um, you don't have much time to kind of react to someone running up on you with a knife, or a bat, or his fist. You know so. That first round needs to count. And even if it doesn't count, it goes bang, the next one's ready. You know, so I've seen other uh, YouTube uh, gun tubers 
uh, big name brands, big name guys like Colian. He actually was reviewing a gun and he had loaded it up and he drew the fire and it was click. And then he kind of laughed and used that as a teaching moment because he said that he stopped what he was doing. He said, this is why I always chamber check. People clown him all the time about the chamber checks. And he demonstrated why. I'm pretty sure that that just happened. You know, it wasn't something that he had planned. It didn't, you know, he looked kind of surprised. Um, but he said, this is why you should always chamber check. Yeah, I could have been in a self-defense situation and I would have been shit out of luck. Um, so, yeah. So, we still have a round in the chamber because, well, a, a snap cap in the chamber because I want to kind of demonstrate something here. So, this guy and his, his tiptoeing and, and tap dancing around uh, the fact that he doesn't like press checks, he said, well, if a round is set back, you're not going to be able to do a press check. So the press check is gonna fail. Let me show you something here. So I'm gonna set the gun down for a second and we're gonna look at a snap cap, which is a replicant, a full replicant of an actual bullet. Look, there's the case, this is the projectile. If this bullet set back when when a, uh, uh, a, rain, uh, a round is chambered, Setback means that the projectile is going to get pushed inside. How much do you think is going to get pushed? Even if it pushes all inside, that yellow part, that projectile, even if it pushes all inside, remember that this back window here is showing the back of the case. If I rack it all the way back until you see the projectile, look how long that is. There's, that, there's not that much bullet set back in the fucking world to where you're not going to be able to kind of tell that a round is chambered. So that shit, you know, that, that, that suggestion was fucking silly. And, uh, you know, it was almost comical how uh, some guys, it's almost comical how some guys, you, you watch them kind of dig, dig a hole, you know, um, so you don't like press checks. There's 20 million other ways. Oh, well, there's, there's four, there's three other ways to check, right? Might as well be, might as well be 100, really. Being an advocate means that you give someone the information that they need, whether or not you agree with it or not, and you let them decide um, what's best for them. So one thing I didn't do that I should have, I should have used it as a teaching moment and said, these are the four ways that you can check an LCI. You no, know, that, that you can check that, that, that around, that around is chambered. LCI, the external extractor, there was one other one. I, I, I say there's four. Um, there's no, but what well, let's, you know, right now just three. I mean, we're talking about the three. Um, so yeah i mean i i i fail to see how press checking is bad if you go to training and this is what i recommend folks if you're unfamiliar with press checking uh, if you go to training nine times out of ten they're going to teach you how to press check and they're going to tell you when you need to press check and they're going to tell you exactly how to do it so when you press check you want to make sure that your fingers not near the trigger shouldn't be near the trigger or shouldn't be touching the trigger anyways but the last thing you want to do is blow your hand off another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be flagging yourself uh, you don't want to be flagging someone else so you point the gun in a safe direction you don't put your body parts in front of it and you do the press check um, I'm at an odd angle but I usually do it like like this and I'm able to look in the chamber so I I use the slide serrations. It's better. It's easiest to do with the gun that has front slide serrations. I grab the slide between my index finger and thumb, and I push forward. I push the gun forward. I press it forward, and usually it, it looks like that. You don't need a lot. You just need about that much. That's an indication that that round is chambered. 
It's super easy. It's better than trying to squint through this hole here in the middle of the dark, you know, in the dark or even if it's half dark. Um, if there's if there's half the amount of light that's in here right now, you're going to have a problem seeing this. The sole reason you're seeing that glint is because this room is yellow. If it's dark, you're not going to see that shit. Instead of squinting for four or five seconds in the dark, boom, you see it. And even if you don't see it, you just stick your damn finger in there and you can feel it. There you go. You're done. You don't need to do check, do it 20 million times like John Wick um, or any other tactical movie. Um, collateral, for instance, you know. Um, it, it's simple. It's quick. You use it when you feel the need, not when a FUD feels the need for you not to do it. Uh, you're to the, you're, you're, you know, you're your own person. Uh, you decide when you think, you know, when you don't know the state of your gun, uh, you don't know the state that your gun is in, you do a press check. That's all there is to it. It's simple. Um, I'm not sure why it turns FUDs off. I've seen more than one FUD kind of blow blow a blood vessel in their, in their forehead because, of, you know, someone mentioned press checks. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Just do the damn press check. And if you don't like press checks, that's fine too. But don't dictate how others should be doing shit. That's not advocacy. That's being an asshole. That's really all I had to say. Um, and this is the fourth take. And this is the best take so far. So let's cross your fingers because the last couple were actually, they went corrupt. So let's see what happens with this video, please. Because it's like 12.30 a.m. and I'm ready to go to bed. But I really wanted to kind of talk about the press checks. So there you go.